All right, so uh, today let's do a deep dive into something pretty interesting, uh, the River Thames and how it's impacted London. Okay. You know, I think a lot of people know that the Thames has always been such a crucial part of London's identity. Right. This bustling waterway right in the heart of the city. Yeah. But, you know, it's also always been a source of a pretty major threat, yeah. flooding. And, you know, with climate change, that threat's only becoming, you know, more serious, That's more and more serious as, as time goes on. Yeah, climate change is having a, a significant impact on London. And uh, yeah. really all across the globe, we're seeing rising sea levels. Right. And that directly affects London's vulnerability to flooding. Right. Higher sea levels mean higher tides. Of course. And when those high tides combine with powerful storm surges, right. it can spell disaster. Yeah. And that's where the Thames Barrier comes into play. Right, the Thames Barrier. Yeah, this incredible feat of engineering that basically stands guard against the rising tide. I mean, it's been remarkably effective. Right. But the question is, can it continue to keep London safe with all of these growing challenges from climate change? I think to really understand, you know, the importance of the barrier, we need to go back in time a little bit, all the way back to 1953. Okay. That year, a devastating flood swept across the UK right. and parts of Europe causing immense damage. Right. And tragically loss of life. Yeah. And that really served as a wake-up call yeah. for the need for flood defenses. Yeah, I've seen pictures and it's just really hard to even fathom the sheer scale of the destruction right. from those floods in 53. Yeah. You know, it's just a stark reminder of how vulnerable London is to the power of the Thames. Absolutely. And that's what led to the construction of the Thames Barrier, right. which officially opened in 1984. Right. And it was designed with a massive task in mind, Yeah. protecting over 1.3 million people Wow. And an estimated 200 billion pounds worth of property. Wow. Those numbers are just mind boggling. Yeah. I mean, that really just underscores how important this barrier is. Absolutely. But how does it actually work? Um, it sounds like something almost out of a science fiction film. It's certainly a marvel of engineering. Yeah. Imagine 10 massive steel gates. Okay. Each one as tall as a five story building. Wow. Lying submerged in the riverbed. Okay. When a flood threat is detected, these gates are raised to form a giant wall. Okay. Effectively holding back the surging waters. So they literally rise up from the riverbed. Yeah. How quickly can they raise those gates in an emergency? The entire barrier can be fully closed in just 30 minutes. Wow. Which is faster than some people's commutes. That's incredible. And each gate is built to withstand immense pressure. Right. Holding back the force of thousands of tons of water. Yeah. It truly is a testament to, you know, human ingenuity and engineering. Yeah, it's remarkable how they've managed to create a system that responds so swiftly to a threat. Yeah. I imagine it takes incredible coordination to operate something that complex. You're absolutely right. It's not just the physical barrier itself. Right. The operation relies heavily on a very sophisticated system. Right. That includes tide predictions, yes. weather forecasts, and an array of sensors. Okay. Constantly monitoring the river's behavior. Wow. All of this data feeds into the control mechanisms. Right. Which, you know, make adjustments as needed to prevent flooding. It sounds like they've really thought of everything. Yeah. So how often does this barrier actually come into play? Uh, has it been effective so far? Since its construction, the Thames barrier has been closed over 200 times. Wow. Which really speaks to its effectiveness in safeguarding London from flooding. Over 200 times, that's incredible. But you know, we keep hearing about climate change and rising sea levels, mm -hmm. and it makes you wonder, is the barrier enough to handle what might be coming in the future? Right. Especially if sea levels are rising faster than expected. Could it keep up? That's a crucial question. Yeah. And it brings us to a bit of a crossroads. The barrier was originally designed to function until around 2030. Right. It's done a remarkable job. Yeah. But it's being pushed beyond its initial purpose now. Right. And we have to consider what happens after 2030. Yeah, it sounds like we're talking about a ticking clock. Right. You know, this barrier has been this stalwart protector. Yeah. But it might not be enough in the long run. Right. The challenge is, um, sea levels are rising faster right. than initially predicted. Right. And climate change is leading to more frequent and intense storms. Right. This means the barrier is being closed more and more each year. Oh, wow. Exceeding those initial expectations. So it's really working overtime yeah. just to keep up with the current situation. Yeah. That raises the question then, 
What happens when it's simply not enough anymore? Well, the barrier was primarily designed to protect against storm surges right. and high tides. Okay. But as those high tides get higher right. with rising sea levels, right. that original safety margin shrinks. And this is why experts are increasingly concerned yeah. about the barrier's long-term viability. Yeah, I can imagine this is causing some concern for Londoners. Sure. What are the experts saying about the future of London's flood defenses? Well, there's a growing consensus that relying solely on the current Thames barrier right. isn't the sustainable solution okay. for the future. Yeah. We need new approaches okay. to address these challenges posed by rising sea levels. Okay. Thankfully, the UK government is already looking ahead okay. Okay. and exploring some pretty ambitious solutions. That's reassuring. What kind of solutions are they exploring? Well, one of the leading proposals is to construct an even larger barrier okay. further downstream. Okay. This new barrier would provide greater protection okay. as sea levels continue to rise over yeah. the next century. So a more robust barrier exactly. to address the more intense challenges. Exactly. Makes sense. Are there any other strategies that they're considering? Yes, in addition yeah. to the new barrier. Authorities are also considering things like improved river embankments okay. and smaller floodgates right. strategically placed throughout London. Okay. So it's a multi-layered approach. Right. So it's kind of like having backup generators in case the main power goes out. Right. Multiple layers of protection working together. Exactly. Now, I read something about adaptive management being incorporated as well. Okay. What exactly does that involve? Adaptive management is a forward-looking approach okay. that involves continuously assessing okay. and upgrading the flood defense system. Right based on the latest climate data. So instead of waiting for problems to arise, right. it's about proactively anticipating those challenges and adapting to them. Exactly. So it's not a one and done solution. Right. It's a continuous process of improvement and adaptation, right. responding to new data and evolving circumstances. Exactly. Right? It's about staying ahead of the curve. Okay. And to help with that, yeah. they're incorporating some really impressive technology, yeah. like AI-based flood monitoring systems. That sounds futuristic. Can you explain how those work? So these AI systems yeah. are designed to analyze massive amounts of real-time data. Okay. They use sensors okay. to track things like water levels, oh. rainfall, right. wind speed, okay. and even tidal patterns. Wow. All of this information is processed by powerful algorithms okay. to predict flood risks Wow! with remarkable accuracy. It's almost like having a crystal ball that can actually predict the future of flooding. You could say that, mm. but instead of magic, right. it's rooted in science and cutting edge technology. Right. Having access to this real time data yeah. allows authorities to make much more informed decisions okay. about when and how to activate flood defenses. So it enables a much more proactive and targeted approach. Exactly. That's amazing. Instead of waiting for a flood to hit, you're anticipating it right. and taking steps to minimize the damage before it even happens. Precisely. Hmm. And the beauty of these AI systems is that they're constantly learning. Oh, wow. As they gather more data, yeah. they become even better wow. at predicting floods. That's incredible. This is especially crucial in a world where climate change right. is making weather patterns less predictable. Right, less predictable. So it's this combination of building these more robust physical barriers right. and then also using technology to enhance our ability to predict and respond to flooding. Exactly. It's this fascinating blend of innovation and adaptation. Yeah. But what about the people who actually operate these complex systems? Sure. What kind of training and expertise do they have? Well, the human element is absolutely crucial right. in all of this. Yeah. The individuals who operate the Thames barrier right. and manage these flood defense systems yeah. undergo extensive training okay. and possess specialized expertise. Right. They're constantly running simulations okay. to prepare for various scenarios mm -hmm. and ensure a swift and effective response right. to yeah. any potential threat. It sounds like they're the unsung heroes yeah. working tirelessly behind the scenes right. to keep London safe. Absolutely. Their dedication and expertise are the backbone of this entire operation. Yeah. They play a critical role yeah. in ensuring that London remains resilient right. in the face of all these growing challenges. We've talked about the incredible technology wow. and the dedicated people yeah. behind London's flood defenses. Yeah. But all of this must come at a considerable cost. Sure. What are the financial implications okay. of maintaining and upgrading these systems? Yeah, you're right. Maintaining and upgrading flood defenses like the Thames barrier. Right. It 
does require, you know, significant investment. Right. But it's really essential to weigh that against the cost of inaction. Right. The potential damage, both economic and social, caused by a major flood in London would far outweigh the cost of prevention. You know what's that old saying, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? It's exactly. Investing in robust flood defenses is a way for governments to mitigate the risk of catastrophic damage. Right. And that kind of widespread economic disruption that a major flood can cause. Right. In the long run, it's a wise investment. And it's not just about protecting buildings and infrastructure. Right. It's about protecting people's lives and livelihoods as well. Absolutely. Human safety should always be paramount. Yeah. Effective flood defenses can save lives. Right. And reduce the trauma and displacement that inevitably accompany major floods. So even though the initial cost might seem high, the potential benefits in terms of safety and security and economic stability are even greater. Absolutely. It's about making smart choices today to ensure a safer and more secure future for everyone. I completely agree. And it brings up another important point. Okay. While governments and engineers are working hard to protect coastal cities like London, what, what can ordinary people do right. to contribute to this global effort? That's a great question. It's easy to feel like these huge problems are beyond our control. Yeah. But are there things that we can do in our daily lives to make a difference? Absolutely. Hmm. Remember, climate change is a global challenge right. that requires a collective response. Right. Every individual action contributes to the bigger picture. Okay, so let's break that down. What are some practical things that listeners can do in their everyday lives to help? Well, one of the most impactful things we can all do is focus on reducing our carbon footprint. Okay. Things like using public transportation cycling or walking instead of driving whenever possible can make a big difference over time. So those little choices that we make each day can actually add up to something meaningful. Absolutely. It's also about being mindful of our energy consumption at home. Okay. Switching to energy efficient appliances, using less hot water, and turning off lights when you leave a room. Right. These all contribute to reducing carbon emissions. We hear these tips often, but it's good to be reminded, especially when we can connect them back to something tangible like the strain on the Thames barrier. Right. It's easy to feel overwhelmed by the scale of climate change. Yep. But even small changes can have a ripple effect when we all do our part. It's about that collective action, right? Millions of individual actions all coming together to create a positive impact. Exactly. What about things like recycling and reducing waste? Do those efforts play a role in protecting coastal cities as well? They absolutely do. By being conscious of our consumption habits. Right. And making an effort to properly dispose of waste. Yeah. We lessen the burden on our planet's resources. Okay. And this in turn helps mitigate the effects of climate change. Right. Which includes things like rising sea levels. So it's all connected. Our everyday choices, yeah. even seemingly small ones, have a role to play in tackling these global issues. Right. Like climate change and its impact on coastal cities. It's pretty powerful when you think about it. It is. And beyond those individual actions, we can also become advocates for change okay. on a larger scale. Right. Supporting policies that promote sustainability. Renewable energy and climate action can make a real difference. So contacting our elected officials voting for candidates who prioritize environmental issues. Exactly. Those are ways that we can amplify the impact of our individual efforts. Exactly. It's about using our voices and our votes to help create a more sustainable future. This has been such an insightful deep dive. It has. You know, we've learned so much about the Thames barrier, the challenges facing London, and most importantly, the ways that we can all contribute to protecting our planet. It's been a pleasure discussing this with you. Likewise. The Thames barrier is an incredible feat of engineering, but it's just one piece of the puzzle. Right. Addressing climate change requires a multifaceted approach that involves innovation, adaptation, and a commitment to collective action. Well said. And on that note, we want to thank you for joining us on this deep dive into the world of the Thames Barrier and the future of flood defenses. We hope it's inspired you to think about the role you can play in creating a more sustainable future for everyone. 